Hello, everyone. Good morning, or evening, or afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for joining today. Uh, I'm just getting myself set up. Let me know how you're going in the chats if you can hear me. Okay, I can see quite a few different. Uh, yeah, I can see quite a few different messages here in the chats. So just let me know. I can see. I've got Mark here, Yvonne. Good to see you both. It's been a little while, hasn't it? You know, the last time I streamed was sometime in early September. I've got Joan, Pamela as well. Good to see you. And uh, in the Facebook page, you've got Christine, Ramona, Ramona uh, Inskeep, Loretta. Good to see you. Okay. Yeah, just let me know. Just let me know how the audio sounds. Okay, I think Islay says the, the audio is great. So, uh, yeah, let me know. I did a bit of adjusting this morning. Now, I might sound a little croaky today. Just came down with a cold yesterday. So, yes, I was a little bit late this morning because I uh, just wasn't feeling 100% up to scratch. But I think we can I think we can make it through. I'm feeling, feeling quite okay after, after some uh, bit of tea this morning. So, okay. So, I'll just let you all know a little bit about me especially if you're new. My name's Darren Yeo, and I'm an artist over in Melbourne. Uh, I was going to say Melbourne, Western Australia, Melbourne, Victoria. Um, I'm from Western Australia. Perth moved over to Melbourne about seven years ago. And basically, I paint a whole different bunch of scenes. I'm an online instructor on a bunch of different platforms, but mainly I have my own platform, and I teach people how to draw and paint in pen and also, also just run normal watercolor workshops. So I've been doing this for... Yeah, online now, probably for about two to three years. Prior to that, I just had not been making any videos, hadn't really been teaching anyone before, but started doing it and got some great feedback. So so this is where I am. But the session, how it, how it basically runs today is I everything's live and I keep an eye on the chats. So if you have any questions, I mean, actually, I encourage you to, to ask questions if I'm around and painting the best way to learn, especially if you're stuck during the workshop or you have a question, maybe you haven't gone through something in enough detail, just put that in the chat. And yeah, you should be able to see it on the bottom or that's in the side of the video, you can just sort of type a message and I'll keep an eye on all that. And it sort of gives me a bit of feedback as well to let me know whether whether I'm on the right track in explaining things because this is, today it's quite a tricky reference and I'm gonna do my best to simplify it down because I don't wanna spend all day drawing and painting as well so yeah let me know where um yeah whereabouts you're all from in the chats and maybe something if you let me know something that you've struggled with in terms of drawing and painting let me know down in the chats and i'll keep an eye there uh, vicky's vicky was saying thought this was free yes this is free this is free so this workshop will be running for probably the next hour and a half while we while we draw and paint so these are a bunch of my uh these are a bunch of my uh my line and wash paintings of uh yeah from a while back so this one actually was from last september 3rd of september i believe it was and we did all this we did this one together a bit of a nice rusty look and uh, just to let you know especially if you're if you're new to uh, new to all this just to let you know the kind of style that i draw and paint in Okay, that's another one there. We've got a, this one was a while a while back, quick little scene, a cafe scene. So yeah, line and wash, one of my most favorite mediums and you're combining the structured line and uh, the line work and the detail with a bit of that watercolor. And I, what I like to do is I like to draw in most of the line work and details in the pen. Afterwards, I go through and add in the, the shadows colors everything in watercolors so i don't put in any really don't put in any shadows with the pen unless it's a really dark area yeah i might go through here and there but um there's some of my watercolors as well just to show you uh kind of the style that i paint in so it's a pretty loose like i said a pretty loose style and lately i've been really obsessed with these australian landscapes uh, i've got some had some good feedback from people so i started painting more of these okay so you can see Another kind of loose landscape there. Okay. Um, oops. I think I went through that one. Uh, 
So these don't take all that long. I mean, for me, they take about one hour to one and a half hours max. And I'm gonna show you, if you stick around, my entire process, how I basically, how I basically paint a scene, draw and paint a scene from scratch. And I use a the same process pretty much in all of my paintings. So you're gonna be able to to adapt this to your own style. And when you have a when you have a process, when you have a process that makes things so much easier, so you don't have to think as much in terms of what do I do next. Uh, what do I paint next? What do I draw next? You know, you kind of have an idea of where you're going. So that way, a lot of that stuff is automatic. And all you have to focus on is the structure, the details, and the actual painting aspect itself. Okay, so anyhow, that's, uh, that is basically, uh, that is basically some of my, I think I have some more here, some more of my paintings. This is one of my, one of my favorites as well, a nice little Australian landscape. And what have we got here? Uh, from the UK, we've got Wendy from the UK. Nice to see you. And uh, thank you for coming along. Becky, struggle with getting values dark enough to provide contrast. Yeah, sometimes you've got to be a little brave with that. And in terms of those dark values, I always put in the light values first, let it dry, then add in the dark values directly after. And uh, that way you have like a two-step process. Okay. And uh, James from Kentucky, we've got Vicky. Uh, oh, yeah, Vic, Vicky's from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Great. Um, is like saying the feed has froze. Um, uh, hopefully, let me know how the or the video and the audio is going. It looks okay. It looks fine from my end, but sometimes, sometimes you know, when when I'm streaming, there are some little issues here and there. Okay, but other than that, I think I'm gonna get started. Um, yeah. Let me have a look, just refresh. Oh, it's fine, okay, no worries. I think I'm getting uh, just multitasking. Bear with me. Thank you all for your patience. <laughs> Looking at a few different screens here. Um, Richard's asking, Richard Harvey. Thanks for joining, Richard. Always here every every month, good on you. Uh, do you use masking fluid? No, I don't use masking fluid. If you want to use it, um, I think it's a great tool, but I tend to just use gouache to bring back the highlights at the end. Um, quite honestly, I think I'm just a little bit lazy to, to apply it before I wait for it to dry and then go on. But, you know, for, for example, this like this area here, I mean, you, you could do very well by just using some masking fluid on some areas. Some people even use masking fluid on top of their first wash to preserve some of the, the yellowy areas. I try to just... Um, do it all in one go. So now I've actually, I'm using a different bit of tape today and this is electrical tape because I, before I started the show, I realized I'd actually run out of masking tape. So I was a bit worried. I thought, well, maybe I just won't use any tape, but uh, this stuff, hopefully it stays put. Um, I like to tape my, I like to tape my paper down so that it doesn't move around once we actually start painting. Uh, because when you start painting on watercolor paper, what happens is that the paper begins to warp if you're not careful okay um just happens it just happens even if you're really careful but uh alrighty so um i reckon i reckon i'm just gonna go straight into it okay straight into it um but actually for you know i've changed my mind i think for you guys because we're all new a lot of you guys are new to maybe drawing and painting tell you what i'll do a quick little quick little uh sketch in pencil of the main areas okay and uh grab the grab the reference photo out now the reference photo you can be able to see it on the side of the screen but I, I don't think it's kind of large enough for a lot of you so if you're on facebook um or or youtube if you go into the description of the video of the event itself you'll be able to find the the link to the reference photo there otherwise yeah you can have a look at what i'm doing just sort of follow along now Tricky scene. Okay, let me just enlarge this photograph. Now, firstly, I want to separate this kind of into this part in the bottom where we've got the stairs. Okay, we've got the stairs and then everything above the stairs. Okay, so the stairs, it sort of begins, not, a, not I say that, that there's a table there and the table is roughly in the middle of the scene right here. Okay, the top of the table. Can you see in the center of the scene, there's a table and a couple of chairs up. Now, 
just underneath there, roughly maybe about here is where the stairs actually start. So just put in a little line like this. I'm drawing in pencil. I'll go over in pen afterwards. Okay. And then you've got this line that runs up the side of this staircase. And it runs about, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say a third, but a little bit more than a third, a little bit more than a third through the page like here. Okay. And I just draw that line like that here. Let's do the same thing for this one here, there. Okay. Um, what I might do actually, how, how's that? I'm not sure if you guys can see so well. Um, my pencils run out of lead. In one moment. Uh, might have to draw a little darker so you're able to see. Once I go through in pen, you're going to be fine. Okay. Okay, but you should be able to see this general structure, this general little outline that I've done. Okay. Staircase. Um, and I've made it up. It needs to be a little bit further in. Maybe like here. Like that. Okay. Um, oh, that should be okay. Okay, so we've got the stairs. We've got this sort of top stair there. Um, great. And uh, I'm not, what I'll do is actually just draw in these different lines, these different lines separating each stair. Okay, just to get it in there. So there's how many are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's seven, seven in there. It's actually quite a lot of, quite a lot in there, but I'll, I'll probably put in more actually. Pen, uh, Penelope's asking, do you wet the back of the paper? No, no, I don't, I don't wet the back of the paper, but you can, if you don't want to use tape, that's another thing you can do. I've seen, I've seen a lot of other, other artists do it. They just, yeah, they just, um, basically, uh, yeah, basically add water to the back of the paper using a, a larger brush, then wet the front as well. So then uh, basically when you're painting wet onto wet, it, uh, the paper doesn't, doesn't move around and crumple and stuff like that and warp. Uh, okay, Marion's, Marion's here, Marion Tischler. Morning, Darren, just going to watch today. Uh, I've been a little unwell. That makes both of us got a cold as well. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming along anyhow. And... It's uh, okay. So we're, we're following along. What I've made a little bit of a mess here, and I just uh, was this line. Let me erase this. Should just be one line. I kind of corrected that before. Okay. Now, just putting in a bunch of these stairs. Okay. Like that. And. Keep an eye, one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep an eye on the on, on the actual like tops of the stairs. Now, as you as you sort of look into the scene, because this is this is photographed from someone looking from the bottom of the staircase to the top. So if you look at the top of the staircase, you'll notice that you can't see the top of the stairs. Okay. The stairs just look almost two-dimensional. But as you start moving around to the center, you'll see that on top of the stairs there's this kind of warm colored part of the staircase. So I think it's like a, yeah, it's the warmer sort of colored part on the staircase where the actual plants are resting on it. So that then takes on a little bit more of a, uh, what you might call it, like a, goes out kind of like that. Okay. So that's just something I'm keeping in mind. Um, here. Okay. There is another example like that. Like that. See what I'm saying? So you've got this kind of uh, these two lines coming out like that at the bottom. So it's just revealing the top of the stairs. Okay. But yeah, when you go up to these sort of areas up there, you can't, yeah, you can't really see all that much. Um, maybe here, let me have a look that third stair. Yeah. Well, you've got like this one here as well. Let me just get this one in, get in another one at the, at here closer to us. Okay. If you get in an extra stair or something, it's no big deal. Okay. Something like that. Okay. This is a good a good little exercise. Um, not exercise, but a nice little thing to do because you are actually... Uh, you are actually... 
penciling in some of these little details before we start putting in the, um, before we start actually putting in the, the, the uh, paint. Okay. So look at all these sort of like pot plants and things. So, you know, you can just go ahead and pencil in a, f you know, a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, there's one, another one here, another pot plant there. This looks like somewhere in Greece. Guys, do you know where this is? I'm pretty sure it looks, you know, like the colors look like, uh, yeah, some kind of like Mediterranean scene. Uh, scene. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, Becky's Becky's saying, I like how you're making your lines. Struggle with trying to make lines perfectly straight. Yeah, I don't bother making lines completely straight because I know I, I, uh, I'll be sitting here for ages trying to do that. And I just find sometimes it gives it a bit more character. But people do. People do find it a bit funny sometimes and they wonder, what are you doing? It's a stylistic choice. Okay, so yeah, kind of as you go up to these stairs, you see that just like, yeah, that you just completely flat. There we go. So yeah, I'm doing this first because these stairs are actually seemingly like they look easy, but that actually confused me a little bit when I was drawing them. I'm just trying to get the top part of them in. Okay, but yeah, draw these little, see how I'm putting in these plants and things here as well. Draw them in. Um, and there's like a cat here as well. This one I was kind of a bit worried about because, uh, yeah. Oops. I hope this looks like a cat. <laughs> okay. Tail. Coming out the back there, maybe. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, just an indication. I'm not I'm not the best with animals, mind you, so uh, do excuse me if this doesn't really look too much like a cat. Um, but I will probably alter this bit by bit as we as we go. Um, where's the ears? These little ears that really make it look like there's. Uh, some kind of animal there, and cat. So, just get that ear in, like that, and comes in, and then comes out like this. Okay. Tail. Mm, let me zoom into that reference photo a little bit. It's better. It's be better if we if we end up making mistakes here. It's better than if we if we end up doing that later with the with the pen work. Okay. Tail. Okay, sort of looking like a cat, but I'm not 100% pleased with that. Uh, I'll leave it for now. I just want to go into getting the other details. Uh, so yeah, these little pot plants, you know, there's another one up here and you don't have to put them in exactly as per the reference. You can just change them around a little bit as well. You know, there's one up here right on the top there. Okay, you've got one here as well. Uh, maybe let's put one here. We'll skip a step and we'll put place one right here. There we go. Nice little scene, isn't it? So much going on. Really so much going on. And I, for some reason, I pick, photo pick photographs and then I realize afterwards what I've done. Pick something that's going to take me ages to do. But I love a good challenge. And hopefully I can pull this off. Because I've got a lot of people watching. Uh, right. So if you're new, because there's about, let's see how many, there's about 70, 75 people here at the moment. If you're new, what I'm doing at the moment is just penciling in some basic details. All right. Just penciling in some really basic details. And then afterwards, I'm going to go in with the pen. 
All right, so let's now start putting in the details of like the table and stuff. So there's a table here, just an oval. I'm just drawing an oval. That, that, coming in like that. Okay. Tricky little table. I actually, I had it, had, if I thought about this enough, I would have actually probably changed this table around a little bit more, but it doesn't matter. We've got a chair here. Um, I'm also being wary not to do all of this. I just want to get in a, a rough indication of the chairs and the, and the bits, of, bits and pieces, not to spend too much time on the drawing here. Okay. But yeah, that's chair. All we're doing is we're penciling in where they are. And I'm doing little measurements in my head. So if you look at the top of the table, that top of the table is around the middle section of the, the paper right here. See the, the scene. You have to find patterns in the scene. The top of the table, center. If you divide the paper into half, just like that. Because then if you, if you do that, then you're going to have enough room for all, all this stuff up the top. Okay. Uh, Aggressive Koala says it's 1.43 a.m. here in Montenegro. <laughs> yeah, I hope you can, uh, hope, hope you can stay awake. Thank you for coming along. All right, so there we go. This is a, this is a uh, side of the chair. This is, and here it actually gets really, like it looks like it's very difficult to tell exactly what is going on in here because there's just a chair here on the side, but then there's also a chair here in the background and it is overlapping. You know, these overlapping shapes are very tricky to do and I don't bother in terms of trying to get it in exact, just something that looks like a chair or whatever. There is this pole that's running up and this actually, yeah, it's interesting because it actually um, supports this tree that's running up. And initially I was a bit funny as to putting that in, but yeah, you know, whether I actually put that in or not, I'm just thinking, yeah, we can always put that in after if I need to. All right, look, I'm just drawing in a bit of these shrubs and stuff here. Uh, let's think about that in a moment. Now, the side of this house, look at that. You can see there's this sort of white part of the house, and then it comes down, okay? And the sky is like a really, really kind of uh, nice blue, cerulean blue in the sky. But then everything around that, you'll see it's just these like bits of tree and even the flowers on the side like that, okay? Let's put in this window. So think of the window in shapes, um, and one of the thing, well, one of the reasons why I love references like this is that they have so many, op there's so many opportunities for you to practice drawing different shapes. Um, you know, we have all you know more, more abstract shapes. We've got more uh, detailed shapes like this, and so this one here is just a. If you look at it, it's just a rectangle. So let's put in that rectangle like this. I'm just. Measuring a little bit, it, it look it's not perfect, but look at the chair. See the chair? You've, since you've drawn that chair in at the top of the staircase, now that down the left of the staircase, there you'll know that the window starts a little bit above the chair, and it starts like midway through the chair. Okay, so when you get in some of those other elements of your scene, you'll find that you can use those uh, up those elements to guide your drawing of everything else. And it all starts from the basic lines that you put in, like this air at the top of the staircase that we were drawing in before. That's why I was spending a bit more time just trying to get that in, okay? Uh, now, I'm spending a lot, like too much, way too much time, I think, on this. Uh... Yeah, I'm spending way too much time on this pencil drawing. I'm, I want to finish, I really want to just finish this off so that we can go straight in with the uh, with the pen, okay? Um, I think I've made this part of the staircase a little bit too wide. So this this uh, ta this uh, door should actually be more to the right. 
doesn't matter. We'll make do. Um, yeah, and we've got like this part of the scene. There's all these like, I mean, we've got all these shrubs and things running across. We'll get that in with the watercolors afterwards. Um, but these, this nice little bit of, you know, what you call it? These trees running through the scene here. Like that, just curling around that tree and then disappearing off to the top like that. You know, I might even add in another one. I love these. Yeah, I love these trees that are just, uh, these branches that are coming in. They really just join up the left and the right side of the scene. Makes it look a lot more interesting. Yep. Okay, let's go in with some pen. Now, in terms of what pens I'm using, I've got a 0.5 liner. Yeah, I've got a 0.5 liner. If you've just got a 0.5 liner, that's going to get you through the entire scene. Or just use whatever pen that you've got. I always recommend getting a pen that has that stated as waterproof. Okay, waterproof or permanent. Okay, because if you're using a pen that's not waterproof or permanent, when you start going in with the watercolors, it is all going to run and you're not going to be very happy. <laughs> so yeah, some of these pens, I've got, you know, I've got some Uniball liners as well. They cost like $2. So I've got a whole set of these because I was gifted these by uh, an art company. But you don't need all, you don't need all these many, uh, these many pens here. Just a 0.5 pen. Do you find around a 0.5? I've got a 0 0.6, 0 0.3 will also do you okay. Um, but when you have lots of these different pens, what it means is that you can get in different different types of lines and make your scene look a bit more interesting. Okay, so let's start off. I'm gonna pick a place to start drawing. Let's start off like around here, maybe here. I'm gonna get in the bottom of this flower pot or plant or whatever. Okay, let's get that in. Just a little pot like that. And don't worry about any of the shadows. All we're doing, all we're doing is that we are getting in the general outline structure of the pot. Okay, not any of the shadows. We'll wait until afterwards. We'll save that for the watercolors because that's where the strength, uh, the strength of watercolors actually comes in. Okay, we don't want it, the whole thing just looking like a pen drawing as well. And I actually experimented on this reference before. Experimented on this reference a few times today. I drew it one in complete pen, one in just partial pen, and it, I think the one in partial pen looks a lot better. Then I'm um, trying to get in all the little intricate details and shadows in the pen because uh, it starts then looking more like a more technical drawing and it's also quite uh, it's quite tedious as well. So look at that. So they're just little pots. I mean, they're actually all pretty similar looking, aren't they? Uh, like some of them have this, what do you even call it? This little thing at the bottom that collects water. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. You know, get some of that. Actually, they all have a <laughs> one of them in there. Something like that. No big deal. Uh, and you know, like I said, that there's there's uh, plants in here that that um, don't really, not really there in the reference, but I put them in anyhow. Yeah, I put them in anyhow. Why not? Why am I drawing these pots first? Well, it's always important to to locate objects that are in front of other objects before you draw the stuff in the back. If I'd started drawing in this staircase and then I started and then I put in the plants, the pot plants after, then what's going to happen is that you're going to uh, go over the top of some of these lines. It's going to look a little bit more messy. You can do that, but uh, for this type of scene, I thought I'd just do this. Let me just move this over to the side. Just a couple of these pot plants, and I'm also trying to get myself to do this fairly quickly, if I can as well, so that I'm not overly, uh, yeah, overdoing it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's have a look. This cat. I've always and one thing you, you know, a lot of you, a lot of you know that I don't really do much animal stuff on Facebook. I tend to avoid it. <laughs> 
and I shouldn't because it's popular and um, but it's just not something that I'm the best at but you got to remember like I mean whatever you're drawing whatever you're you're painting it's everything is comprised of shapes so if you can reduce down some of this stuff into shapes it makes it a lot easier so I'm just gonna scratch in put in a few little details for this cat okay no promises that it's actually gonna look uh, <laughs> look like a like a proper cat but uh, I'll give it a try okay there we go oh it's actually coming off more of an angle this tail isn't it yeah like kind of like there <laughs> Yeah, I should put it more on a bit of an angle to the left. You know how they use their tails to balance? I guess the right foot and tail goes to the left to counterbalance or something. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's like a foot here. Good enough, good enough. I'm not going to uh, do any more for that. Here we go. Let's get these stairs in. Now, because we've got the pencil before, drawn in with the pencil before see it just makes it a little bit more easy to draw in these steps we're not really thinking about this uh, area now remember what i was saying before the top of the stairs have this kind of flat section here okay that sort of oops no good now if you make a mistake like i just did there um, lift the pen off and just correct uh, kind of course correct from there okay don't um don't try to scratch it out or do anything um you know do any of that sort of stuff because it's just going to stuff it up even more okay and yeah i'm, I'm making these lines also I'm, you know not too perfect they have a bit of this squiggliness squiggly aspect to it that's fine as well uh, but you don't have to make them like that look I mean I can just make them completely straight as well why not see look completely straight yeah but I find uh, yeah for me I just like having a, having them a little bit imperfect in terms of uh, a bit of squiggliness in those lines um, now this stair is actually like what are you gonna think? Actually, like getting to the point where you can't quite, um, you almost can't quite see the top of those, the top of the stairs. Okay, and this now becomes pretty much the wall. So start drawing in these other remaining stairs, and and you notice these stairs also become a little bit shorter compared to the ones at the top. A little bit shorter. Oh, that's no good. I've not. Uh, that one should be at least on top of that pot plant. Doesn't matter. Here's another one here. Uh, this top one's like pretty important because all the. Everything is sort of sitting on it. The this table. Okay, there we go. So we've got, you know, bits and pieces. In here, uh, you know, one thing I haven't done is actually I'm not putting any of the plants and stuff in there, but but I will put them in later with watercolors. Okay, there's small things you can do, like you can put in a little few little branches like that. But I think I think we will do better if we just leave them empty, and hopefully I remember. Just remind me later if I forget. Remind me later. Actually, put something growing out of these these pots. Okay, just really trying to figure out this one bit here. Doesn't matter. Okay, so this part of the staircase to the right. Let's get that in like this. Okay, the one to the left. This is the most important bit. So if you don't get this part of the this area of the staircase correct then what happens is that you, you don't leave enough room to paint the stuff up the top 
sometimes you make the staircase too high and then you've got all these stairs and that might be your intention. I mean, if, if the you can modify reference photos as well, if this photographer was further down the staircase, there'd be less stuff up the top. But the scene, uh, you know, representative of the reference picture, at least loosely representative of it, you have to keep in mind these little measurements that you're doing and then often they're not automatic measurements. You have to really look at the, the photograph and that example I was using before is the top of this table lines up with the center of the scene. And if you can recognize little patterns like that, it makes it a lot easier. Um, let's go ahead. Let, so over here you can see there's, you know, shrubs and things. Look at how they just overlap and, you know, make a bit of a, lots of these little bits of mess and stuff coming up. Just have a bit of a, just have a bit of a play around here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just, just scratching in some little details. Okay. Coming up through this, we've got the, now a lot of, there's actually three different, I didn't see that before. There's three different branches running through here, but I don't like, there's something about it that I don't like. I'm not sure why. I think they're just, because they're so close together. I'm thinking, I'm thinking whether I want to make one come out even to the right or go make one come out to the top or something like that. Okay, let's, let's uh, rest on that for one moment. But what we can do is just have a play around with this one. Okay, something like this. Get this branch running out somewhere to the left, whatever. Okay, like that. I don't know. Let's let's just let's just do it. Uh, okay, maybe here, like that. Like that. Because we've got things moving to the left, so having something moving to the right might help to balance it. Just these little things I've noticed over time that just through drawing and painting that if uh, the, the balance of op when there's oppositional things going on, it makes, makes the scene look more interesting. And then you're having these tree branches also help to join up the whole scene. So you're joining up the left and right hand of the scene by doing this. Yeah, sketching's pretty difficult. That's for sure, aggressive koala. Um, just keep it loose. Hold the pen kind of near the, the back of it as well. If you're struggling to make this this painting, at, I keep calling it a painting. It is going to be a painting -ish or something like that soon. But you hold it at the back and it helps to make the line work a bit looser. Okay. I'm just moving the pen around almost kind of erratically to, to get this sort of squiggly, squiggly sort of effect. Because I, I learned... A while back that by trying to make the branches look too straight and make them look like branches they actually end up not really looking like them at all and so uh, that's why I kind of do this and that way if I make an error it also doesn't really look like an error uh, contrary to what a lot of people think I'm actually pretty I'm actually a pretty lazy sort of painter I like to get I like to find the shortest path to a to a good result in my mind a good result or a, a um you know, at least an acceptable an acceptable result for myself so if i don't have to sit here for a long time i like to just finish everything in one go and there's a satisfaction in that there's a there's a real satisfaction in just looking back and be like wow did i really did I really draw? Did I really paint that in an hour or two? That's, you almost can't believe it at times. And it's funny because a lot of it is also just letting go. Letting go of of, of this perf uh, perfectionistic. And, and being a perfectionist is, you know, that can be good in, in its ways. But for a lot of people, including myself, stop me from doing a lot of things. And uh, the quantity, sometimes the quantity of the work, the practice that you put in um, will lead to quality. Not sometimes, a lot of the time. Because just, just by brush mileage alone, 
the amount of work that you put in. So uh, I've just been using one pen. You know, and I was actually thinking of using other pens, but end up just using one. It doesn't matter. But it goes to show, like like I said, you don't need a whole bunch of, you know, hundreds of different pens. Like, you know, look at this. There's like 15 pens or something, 20 pens or something like that in there. Don't need them all. You just need a couple. Okay. You notice there's all, lots of leaves and things up here as well. I will draw in maybe a few of those leaves, but for the most part, I, I think I'm just going to leave... An intentional pun. I'm just going to leave this for later. <laughs> for the watercolors. Um, I'm going to put in a few little a few little ones here and there. But I, it, it's funny because like the more, some, sometimes the more details and stuff that you put in here, it starts to detract from the rest of the scene. Okay, so you kind of are just indicating maybe a few little leaves and stuff but at the same time I don't want to I don't want to overdo it you know also because look how complicated all these leaves are there's like thousands not thousands there's like hundreds of leaves that I can see anyway in here I'm not going to sit here drawing them all because I'm going to go mad uh, Pamela says, just using one pen, my fountain pen. Yeah, just fountain pen's enough. One pen, one pen, you, you can do it all with one pen. One pen and, th and three colors, three watercolors. That's all you need. You don't need a whole lot of, you know, hundreds of pens and hundreds of colors to get a nice painting. In fact, the simplification of things by reducing down the amount of variables that you have, a lot of the time result in a better painting, a better drawing. If you're a beginner, Especially because sometimes a lot of choice, a lot of choice just gives you um, the 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 opportunity to almost make more errors. Okay, what am I doing? I just I just keep going through these these things and putting in now, the side of this this building. Let's get this in where it, see this white building. How about that? Bring that down. Okay. All these squiggly little lines. You don't have to do that, by the way. Just, just my style, my weird style. Um, yeah, you know, this is kind of like darker line up here. I think that's the supporting frame. You know that these trees are actually tied to. Um, I'm really hesitant, actually, to to put too many of that too many of those in I'm thinking whether it's even necessary I'll have something there just for the sake of it like that what do you what do you call them you know how that you kind of have this canopy supporting frames where the trees and things can climb up on support themselves because uh, I mean this these trees are growing off to the side, but they're not, you know, obviously, they're not going to stay like that forever if they're not being supported. Uh, okay, what else do we have? We're almost there. We just got to put in the, the stuff in the center. Uh, let's, let's split up this window into the side parts. Two rectangles. One, two, something like that. A couple of little rectangles. Um, oh, yeah, and, and this is where things can like get complicated because there's so much detail in here. There's the frame of the window like that, and then you've got the blinds that run through the window. And this is where, you know, using another pen, a smaller pen might actually help. Just um horizontal lines running across check this out do it all in one go just like this just quick in one go like that that's all you need to do one two three four whoops 
I've never painted, never drawn or painted this reference photo before. Just working it out along the way, which goes to show if you just have a process and how you draw things, you, you, you can draw anything, draw and paint anything really, reduce it down to, um, reduce it down to shapes and little components like this. And of course, it may not turn out exactly the way you intended, but you can still get a decent representation of what's going on here. I mean, that looks like a window. To me, it looks like a window anyway. It's a pot plant here. I think that's pot plant, is it? Yeah, it's pot plant, another one here. And the great thing about this pen and wash, line and wash stuff is uh, the detail. These little details that you can get in here, which are so difficult in watercolors. Takes multiple washes, okay? But uh, I, if you draw in these details, you go over the top with a couple of basic washes. All this, these little details are preserved in there. What is in? What is going on in here? Is no, yeah. Let's let's leave that till later. There's uh, little reflections and stuff in the windows. I'm tempted to draw them in, but I think they're best done just in the paint afterwards. Okay, these dreaded tables and chairs. I really was not looking forward to drawing these, but let's give it a crack. It's, uh, oval shape. Oval shape for the top of this table. Like this oval shape. There we go. Oh, it's a little bit long, but it doesn't matter. Um, and I think almost the simpler this is, the better. Okay, let me just get that in a little bit. What a funny table. All the, of all the designs, like, surely I could have put in something that was a little simpler. <laughs> yeah, okay. Bottom of the table, yeah, what a interesting looking table, I have to say. Oh, there's a little, start joining up the, the base like that. I'm not too happy with it really, but uh, look, at least it's, at least it's there. Okay, and using this this pen that I have here, just like a a uh, thinner sort of pen. You're actually looking at the underside of the table because we're looking from the bottom upwards. Just what I was saying. This is like actually quite a tricky scene. And there's a little pot or something here with uh, it could be like a jug or something you know, there's a couple of handles i don't know what it is i think it's some kind of jug like that okay and let's just start going into this chair at the back like that okay coming down A little bit of detailing I did there, or the planning out I did with the chair beforehand has really been helping. Oops, yeah. It actually comes out more to like the right hand side like that. Uh, uh, oops. A uh, couple of, oh, I should have left these bits open, but doesn't matter. A couple of bits like that. Uh, let me see, is that that? Oh, two more coming down. This is, it's not easy. If you've made it this far, you're doing really well. Cause I'm like kind of struggling with this myself a bit. Okay, the bottom of that chair, you know where you put your foot, that rest there in the bottom of the chair, there you go. So that kind of looks like a chair, doesn't it? I mean, that took a while to draw. You think sometimes you think it's a lot. It looks so easy, but then you end up drawing it. And it's more than kind of meets the eye. Uh, okay, one more of these things. Yeah, this table. I don't know. I don't really know about that table, but yeah, let it go. Uh, like that. 
Okay, it's got a chair from the side, so yeah, there's, there's less, you don't have to make it too three-dimensional, I like that one anyway, so it's just like a chair to the side, there's like the seat there, and you've got this other one at the back, kind of mirroring that one as well, like this, okay, oops, too big, doesn't matter, uh, right there, copy that one, just kind of copying that one a bit, there's stuff going behind that chair, but you know what? Let's not bother too much with that. Let's not bother too much with that. Um, now, really final chance here to add in any other details you want, like branches and stuff. And if I want to, say, put in a branch coming up through this one, there, um, like that. It's just looking, how can I balance this up a little bit more? Do I want to put, in, do I want to put one coming in there? You know, this is the funny thing because I was actually thinking maybe because we've got all these shrubs to the right, why don't we want to make some more come off to the come to the left? Because this this area looks a bit bare. But also keeping in mind that there's going to be some shadows running through here, so that's going to help it um, look a bit make a bit more sense. Uh, Why not? Another one here. At the risk of overcomplicating things. Okay. I really like these trees to the right though. Okay, so if you've got to this stage, you've done really well. Now rub everything out. Rub out all the pencil with... Uh, yeah, rub out all the pencil now. Should just be left with the pen. Okay. And let's just see how we are at. Do you have any questions? Let me know. Uh, just, yeah, let me know how you're doing so far. I hope I haven't left some of you behind or confused any of you. Um, I'm really interested to hear how, you, how you're going so far. So let me know. Please let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions or just how things have been running so far, if you have any questions. I actually think I've been multitasking quite okay, but there's not been too many chats come through, so I'd like to see some more questions because that's going to help you if you have anything. There's no, there's no silly questions. Okay. There we are. We've got a bit of, you know... That's it, that's it. Uh, just get rid of all these pencil shavings. And for those of you also who are new to watching along as well, if you check in the description of my of my video here, you'll be able to find the link to my Patreon and also to my 70 course program, which I've had running for a couple of years now. And you can sign up on a monthly basis if you're interested in learning how to paint a variety of different subjects. I do, um, I think there's about four or five hundred different videos and projects in there so yeah check it out especially if you're if you've been enjoying the the session today and you want a little bit more yeah have a look it does help me out a great deal as well continue uh, doing what i'm doing uh okay let's have a look okay okay there's some chats here great 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 um and yeah, oh, a big thing as well, if you are enjoying this and you're finding it helpful so far, please do me a favor and just share it with someone, uh, a friend or someone that might enjoy it. You know, it might be even in a, in a watercolor group that you've, you know, that you're part of because it, it really helps me out a great deal to get this video out to more people, just spread the word of what I, of what I do in terms of these workshops. It doesn't cost you a cent as well. Uh, so we've got... A few questions here. Marion's asking what type of rubber are you using? Oh, this is just a basic one, Marion. It's nothing special. You know, nothing special, usual 50 cent one. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you've got a kneadable razor, I need to get another one of those because the, the one that I've got is just, it's just uh, been overused too much, too much carbon and stuff in it. Kneadable razor is great. They don't create all this, you know, these annoying little shavings everywhere. 
Um, uh, Lee's asking, when will you put in the pot plants? Yeah, we'll put them in afterwards. We'll put them in afterwards when we have the uh, through the watercolors because I, I really think by just actually painting the painting the pot plants in, um, the actual plants in later will be better rather than just drawing them in because if I draw them in, it's just going to look almost too detailed. Okay, I'm using the pen just to add in some real basic details. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, 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 um. Doesn't it damage the paper? Marion's asking. Yeah, it can. It can sometimes if you're not careful. But I haven't had too much of an issue myself. If you're using cotton watercolor paper, you should be fine. Um, Lee's asking, use a lump of blue tack as a razor. Oh, never thought of that before. Okay. <laughs> um, some nice funny comments on uh, YouTube as well. Aggressive Quiles saying, my rectangular cat looks out of this world. Uh, you still got a chance to uh, make it more, um, change it up afterwards. With the painting, um, Margaret says, I've kept up with you, free, free drawing. It may not look like yours, but I'm happy drawing this one. Excellent. Ah, oh, good to see you, Don. I haven't seen you for a while. Don Johnson, first time being able to join you in a long while. Great to see you again and follow along. Yeah, thank you for coming along. And, uh, yeah, I'm sniffling a bit. I've got a bit of a cold, so, uh, excuse me. Okay. I think that's it. Let's get in some colors. Let's get in some colors. Now for the first part here, I've got myself some of these brushes, these watercolor mop brushes. How long have you been drawing for? Nearly an hour. This is a bit over the top. Uh, so a bit of water and I'm just mixing up here. Actually, let me move this mouse away so you can see my palette, the complete palette. This is going to make it a lot easier for you all to, to, um, to see how I mix colors, because the mixing of colors is so important. Again, the, the, the proportion of color is, is uh, crucial as well. Okay, what do we got? Now, a lot of this is kind of white here. The stairs are white, the building's white, so I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that white. But everything else, we have a little bit of color on it. It's kind of interesting because we've also got like this, yeah, these shadows running down here as well. So I've got a mop brush, a couple of mop brushes. I've also maybe got a little smaller brush like this, a synthetic, smaller synthetic brush. But what I want to do is I want to get in some of the lighter colors. I'm really thinking here, just to make sure that I'm going to do this, do this right. Okay, bit of, let's start off with maybe some yellow ochre. Where's my smaller mop brush? Here. Bit of yellow ochre. Um, just a subdued yellow. And you can see like these pot plants, like they have a bit of this yellowy color to it or, or whatever. Um, some of them actually really light, like super light. Um, but just a little bit of something in there. And the tops of these, like, tops of these stairs as well, you can see it's actually got a bit of this color to it, this warmer color, like that. Yeah. Okay, really, really light wash. I'm using 90% water and 10% paint. It's just, yeah. And now some of these pots are a little bit lighter than what I've painted here. Okay. Here's a cat. I'm going to get a bit of orange in for the cat. A bit of orange. Dull it down a little bit. You can mix up your own orange. You can use whatever you got. Orange and maybe a bit of brown, like uh, what you call it? Burnt sienna. Let's have a look. How does that look? A bit lighter. Okay, so really just painting in all the lighter bits. 
yeah, of the uh, scene. That. What else do we have? The chair looks like it's floating. It doesn't matter. We'll uh, make it darker later. Um. Okay. Okay. This is looking good now. Um, the tops of these plants. We'll get the plants in later. Because if you look at the, the, the actual plants themselves, the, the leaves and things are quite dark. So we can go over the top. The values of those plants, are, the, the little leaves and things are a lot darker than everything else in the scene. Okay. Um, let's have a look. What else do we have? We've got lots of kind of bluey areas and like the... Another thing I want to do is get in this... Area of these trees, you see these, these sort of trees here, I guess I kind of, uh, like yellowish brown, aren't they? Bit of like a yellow ochre and a brown mixed together, more brown actually. Dark brown, if, if you've got some burnt umber, raw umber, bit of yellow, mix them together. But it's also, they're, they're pretty light, these trees, so I don't, I don't need to bother too much with, uh, I don't need to bother too much. with any of the browns in there. It's kind of like, you know, just a little bit of, drop that bit of brown in with the wet yellow. Okay. Look how quick I am with this. I'm really trying to speed things up. Okay. That. That. Look at that, just going up into the sky. We've got this one here. Just drawing and painting these little branches. Because these are going to look really interesting when we contrast them with the shadows and stuff later. Trees. And the, the uh, what you call it? The leaves and things like that. Which, uh, Come to mention now if we're going to do them soon. But before we do, I want to get in a light wash of blue, cerulean blue. I'm really careful not to try to get this mixed up with some other colors, but I am already, actually already some other colors mixed up in here. But yeah, the light little kind of blue running through this, because actually we need to go over the top afterwards with some darker blue, get in like the shadows. Okay, but um, this will do you okay. Yeah, no, that's all right. We can get in this in blue as well. That. Okay. Look at that. Pretty quick sort of bit of blue like that. Cerulean. The table as well. You know, look at that. Just a bit of, tiny bit of that blue. Like that. And uh, some of these chairs, just get that in quickly. This chair here to the left. Light. Remember, we're using just so much, um, so much water in this mix. Okay. Door as well here to the left. This is like blue, isn't it? Cerulean blue. Um, and it's not the value, actually, of the door at the moment but we'll, we'll make it darker afterwards. I'm using smooth watercolor paper as well, hot press, which makes it quite tricky. Makes it a little tricky. Uh, Christine's asking, where do I find the outline? Uh, I'm not sure what you, what, uh, because pawns are not my thing. Drawing, drawing's not my thing. Maybe that's what you mean. Um, yeah, so if you go into the event, if you click into the event, Christine, and then go into the discussion section, there is a tracing template that I've added in there. Okay, so we can check that out. Okay. Sky. I'm going to put in some ultramarine, tiny bit of ultramarine into this mix of cerulean blue so that I've got a bit of a more 
a bit more uh, strength in that area of the sky. Didn't mean to go over that part of the building, but it doesn't matter. Bit of strength there. Tell you what, this electrical tape's holding up well. Those of you who weren't here before, I've had to use some electrical tape because I ran out of masking tape. <laughs> okay, that's the sky. That's looking good. Maybe maybe a touch darker in some areas. If it look, I don't mind if it turns out a little slightly blotchy. As long as it's the right value. Because really to make this the white of that building pop, I want to make the, the blues really quite, um, yeah, as you can see, quite uh, obvious. I forgot to get in this little pillar here, these little bits of pillars or whatever. Just paint that in. You know, there's even like a little ones here gone in before just a quick indication of those no big deal um, running across here as well there's something like a darker kind of pillar okay all right bit of green I've got a touch of green here this is a bit of undersea green um, I actually like to mix in a bit of yellow to my greens um, especially because we're getting in some of these really light green colors uh, for the the, uh, the light okay like this I'll actually go over a second time to get in some of the darker greens okay well that's you know the reason why I actually paint all the stuff paint all my yellows in first is so that it doesn't end up mixing too much with these greens because afterwards it tends to be so easy to accidentally mix mix colors that you don't don't want Okay, here as well, look, there's some like lighter green leaves and things. Let's just drop in some of this stuff. Okay, it's trying to like dab and go, just dab and go with this little mop brush. I'm trying to not go over the, trying not go over the, uh, what you call it, the branches as well. And it's that same consistency, you know, that really, uh, what you may call it really light mix you know i'm only using about 10 to 20 percent of paint in here okay because you, you notice there's some lighter leaves and this is just a simplification really because i don't want to spend all day doing this you know even here you can see on this like the side of this house there's like little bits of you know trees a uh, little bit of this this like shrub running across down look at that just little little dots and that's all you need to indicate that there's potentially something there or, or we do it afterwards and maybe add in a bit more here and there see how we go more green also put in some darker greens in here as well Okay. okay. Just having a quick look check in the comments. Um, I'm assuming you picked this photo reference because of the shadow on the stairs and wondering if that was electrical tape. Some washi tape is black like that. Uh, yeah, Holbein is the only tape I've had success using. Yeah, uh, you know, masking tape's the best. Masking tape's the best because when you lift off the tape afterwards, it's, um, it doesn't, it generally shouldn't tear the paper if you've waited for it to dry. And yeah, I love the, uh, like, yeah, I did pick it because of this, this shadow pattern, definitely. This is a, quite an obvious shadow, but so much shadows in everywhere, and we can get we're going to do the shadow all in one go later on. Okay, but for now, let's keep working on these trees 
and put in some more darker bits and places. Okay. And be careful not to go into the branches as well. Just, uh, yeah, be careful not to go into the branches. Just kind of cut around them a little bit. And what we're doing here is that we're, we're using a technique in watercolor called wet and wet. So we're basically just, yeah, like painting, putting some, some color already into a wet area and letting it paint itself, letting it mix around and do its own thing. Okay, and some of this yellow, uh, some of this like lighter green areas will have already dried, which is absolutely fine. Okay, but I but I wanted some of that lighter lighter uh, green on there so that it um, looks more looks like there's some light on those leaves as well, so it's not just the same color. Okay. Having a mixture of values, that's what is so important in watercolors and people often miss this out just understanding that you need a few different colors in there uh di different values sorry different light and dark values because the world basically is made out of light and dark colors it's not just flat and to make things darker generally you just add in some more paint into your mix okay more water it becomes lighter and if you want it darker just add in more paint there are some colors that you can't really do this to like yellow for example I mean you, you can add in as much yellow as you want and it's still going to be pretty light color but if you took talking about say green or blue purple that kind of thing you can get in quite a few different different a uh, few different shades of it Okay, there's something going on there. I think that that, that is looking okay. Um, I'm going to work on this, and then I'm going to go back in there and just get in this whole shadow all in one go, yeah? And then also on this the staircase and stuff as well. Uh, okay, let's have a look at this shadow. I'm going to use maybe some purplish color. Let me just... Yeah, I just want some purple in here. And maybe put in a bit of gray. You can mix up your own grays as well, just using um, using a bit of uh, maybe three primaries. There's, there's a little bit more warmth in this wall, like around here. Yeah, a little bit of warmth at the bottom of that wall. So I'm just like trying to figure out what we're going to do. Maybe a bit of yellow in here into that. Just mix up a gray that's got a bit more kind of yellow warmth in it. Has this stuff all dried yet? Yeah, that's pretty much all dried. Uh, yeah, I think we have to just do this all in one go. There's really no other way to do it. Uh, okay, let's, here goes nothing. Just testing out, testing that out. Yeah. There we are. And this will dry a little bit lighter as well, mind you, so. Um, on top of this pot plant as well, there's a bit of a shadow, see that? Let's bring this whole wash downwards. And yeah, I'm using I'm trying to match that color, uh, not the color, but the, the value at least of that shadow. Okay, so it's probably about 30% paint. Surprisingly, it's not as dark as I you would think. But if I make it lighter and then add in some more darkness in there um, afterwards, if I've got the, the value in wrong, um, that's it's still going to work. But if I get it in too dark, that's when you run into issues. Ah, geez, where is it? Oh, I've got it here. This is the... You just use this brush, smaller flat brush to detail the bottom of this uh, pot here. And then we've also got this here, this shadow on the pot. 
Matt um, Shadow on the stairs here. Um, okay. Should I join that shadow onto the wall side as well there? So it all kind of just comes in as one big shadow. Looks like one big shadow. Um, yeah, like that comes down here. Like that. As well. Yeah. This one's out of the scene, but I'm just going to like make it up like this. Oops. Maybe like that. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, this um, bit of paper is a bit, uh, it's a bit funny because it is like a um, smooth bit of watercolor paper, so it's difficult to get in a nice smooth wash, ironically. A bit more blue or something in there, a bit more inconsistency. Okay. Uh, good. Some of this shadow here on the on the steps as well. Let's just get in some of this. Now this is all pretty much going to be the same. Like we actually put it in to that building, go straight in, and add in a little bit of this. It's kind of like a bluish shadow as well. Where's my smaller mop brush? Here it is. <laughs> Um, this area is kind of like dark already, so it's still wet, I mean, so you can just sort of go in there and middle around with it a bit. Um, That. It's a tricky reference. Shadows on the on the wall as well. Very tricky little shadows on the wall, but uh, we will make do. Remember to leave in, leave out some of the white. I'm going to paint the whole thing in the same color. Okay. I'm trying to do this quicker as well. I'm spending too much time on it. And um, notice the color I'm using here is fairly dark. Bit of purple, bit more purple in there. And you'll notice there's little bits of white speckles and things as well. So we're not, remember to leave out little bits of that white as well. And this is why the watercolors is just so great for this. I mean, it's just makes it easy, doesn't it? Imagine doing this in pen. You're not going to have much fun. Hmm, what's going on here? Okay. Something like that. Mm. 
Darkness around the table. Underneath it as well. Yeah. Remember to just cut around all these uh, bits and pieces. Oops, gone into that stair. Top stair. Doesn't matter. So darkness in between that the chair and Okay, okay. Um yeah, I think I could soften off some of these shadows here. This is too sharp. Just add a little bit of water and lift off the paint for some of this stuff. That would be good, just soften some of those shadows off. I'm going to get the shadows in for these tree, uh, not trees, but the windows and stuff now. Um, I'm using some like darker blue, maybe mixed in with a bit of black, darker ultramarine. Same deal, same deal as the other, um, as what we were doing before, just leaving in, leaving out some of that lovely light blue that's be that's behind there okay Let's put in some more like little reflections or something running through the window. Like this. Like this. Yeah, something running through the window. Why not? Okay. Um, this one here also needs to be darkened, this window. This door, sorry, here. Le leaving out some of the background color as well. That. This part is actually really dark at the center of that door, so I'm going to leave that. Okay. A little bit for the chairs, maybe a little bit of color in for the chairs. A bit of darkness in them. Okay. Carry this shadow kind of down into the down a bit further um, here. More gray in there. It's tricky, really tricky. This scene. Some of these shadows running down the wall as well. Look at that, just trying to get this in in, more, in a most efficient way.
Um, let's have a look. More shadows. Where do we have the rest of these shadows coming? They're like pretty much like on the steps and things, aren't they? Like here, there's some more. Let's just get in, scumble in a few little marks. That's a bit of darkness on that cat as well. Um, move this down. Yeah, it's basically these like the shadows of the trees. Even on top of this pot plant, there's some darker shadow as well here. I'm gonna have to, I reckon I'm gonna have to redo some of these shadows a bit, just to darken them more as well afterwards. Here. Yeah. All right. A step. Okay, and you do so. You also see some little, little bit of shadow on the left side of the pot plants, like here. See, just like to the back area, like that. So I can just do that. Add that in. As well, maybe here, like this. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Good. We're going to give this a really quick dry, then we're going to put in all the final finishing touches uh, and bring it all together. Okay, how are we all doing? Let me know. Let me know in the comments how you're all going. Um, we've still got about 60 people watching along. Hang, um, more than 60, probably like 65. Make sure you stick around because this last bit's really important. It just brings out all the... I'm just going to show you how to bring out all the little details and, and uh, some of the shadows, which is going to be really crucial in making this scene pop out a little bit more. And 
uh, what we got here? Just have a look. Pot plants. Yes, um, I will put the pot plants in there. The thank you for reminding me. Um, but let me know how. Let me know how you're doing. Okay. Okay. So, so if we look at the scene, if we look at the reference photo, you'll notice that there's a lot of it's like little speckles of darkness. So in the window frames, there's uh, you know we'll start off even here first. This is the easiest part here. So just a bit of dark paint, and I'm using mostly the eighty percent paint, twenty percent water. What am I doing? I'm putting in this area of this window um, like this. Okay, any dark area like that. Getting a bit of weird lag on my end. Um, how's it going? How's the video quality? Hang on. Okay. I think I had, there was a bit of a delay there for some reason. The sort of dropped out. I'm going to continue anyhow. Um, I was actually up to the part. I was up to the part where I was adding in some shadows for the window there. Adding some little shadows for the window. Let me know how, um, if everything's going like, oh, I can't hear. Unknown error. God. Okay, I'm just going to wait for things to stabilize a bit. For some reason, it kind of cut out for a second. Apologies for that. I uh, don't know why that happens sometimes. Okay. I think we should be okay. We should be okay. Um, oh no, we still got about... We got about 60 people. Um... Okay, so getting back to this whole thing, got some darker color here, darker color with mostly paint in it, not much water, mostly paint, probably like eighty percent to ninety percent paint to ten percent water, and I'm going in here and and just adding in a few little tiny little details, like the edges of these windows. See here, there's a bit of darkness here. Um. Once you're on the top of this window, on the top of this window, you'll find that there's uh, actually a bit more darker blue. I've forgotten to get that that in before. Um, really just putting in some final details. Okay. These lines, some of these lines on the, the shutters. Um, even the shadows in the window, like there's these like darker sort of shadows that need to be, I think anyway, just need to be emphasized a little bit more. Running through there. Okay. It's just your opportunity to add in some small details and touch-ups, I guess. And I like to use a little brush like this. 
little round br uh, little flat brush or a little round brush. Okay, just really brings the details out. You know, the edges of this table even, you know, I can just add in a bit of color here and there, you know, on the even on the base of the table or this something like that. You know, you can really kind of bring bits of bits and pieces out. Uh, what have we got here? Like on the this chair as well. The shadows on this chair, they do need to be darker, so I can, you know, go ahead and do something like this. Just little touch-ups, really. Little touch-ups of detail. The frame of this this door as well. There's some little, you know, tiny details that you might want to add on. Okay, like that. Um, you know, in the background there, this something up there moving across the top of the scene. The bit of uh, what you call it. You know, this bit of wood like that, these little wooden pieces like that. We can get that in, okay? And on top of that, we've also got some really, really dark colors, okay? Some more shadows in here. Let's put some green, another layer of darkness. But the trick here is to leave out, leave out some of this uh, as well, so you, you leave the previous wash in, but still get in enough of this darkness in areas. Okay, little speckles of color, and you'll find that because the the light source is coming from the left, uh, from the right, sorry, that to the left of some of these plants and things, that you're going to get um, a shadow running to the left of these. This area so oops that's a bit too much doesn't matter I'll just move that color around okay okay look at that just dropping in some more of this darkness and the longer you know you can spend a lot of time on this and just get in the details like lots of little details but I um, I'm only trying to do this quite quickly for you all but you can spend a lot of time on this as, as long as you want, really. Okay. And notice how I'm not really painting in leaves. Like it, they may look kind of like leaves, or I think they they look some of them look like leaves anyway. But they, I'm just trying to look at the the light and the dark in this scene. Like what areas are light, what areas are dark, and I'm just trying to put that in, imply that through some of these these colors here that I'm dropping in. Okay. Uh, maybe some more here, little bits of green or something running through this section, like this. Make it look a bit more interesting. Darker. Darker bits. And... A lot of beginners are really afraid to put in darker colors because they think it's it's going to overwhelm the scene. But you need to put in some of these these darks because it's going to bring out the light of your scene. Um, I will put in. I want to put in a little bit of a shadow on some of these trees, like the left side, just a little bit of brown or whatever here. Okay. Not on all of it, but just on the left side of the tree here to get in this sense of light coming from the right hand side. Okay. Pretty subtle. You know, even here, there's actually darker browns running through this tree branch, and it's quite dark, really. This really quite dark. I'm using just almost pure brown with mostly. Uh, paint in there not much water a bit of neutral tint to darken that down further okay look at that 
It's, a, it's starting to come together very, like, slowly but surely. It's starting to look like something. Okay. And uh, these darker branches, they, I just love having some of this stuff in here to make it look more interesting and the colors more varied. Um, because, you know, this is kind of underneath, obviously, and there's a lot of darkness, a lot of darkness due to the, the trees and the, the, the uh, leaves and things up the top there. So um, when you're looking at the, when you're looking at these branches here to the left, you're going to find that they're going to be darker, a little bit darker than the ones to the right here more kind of in the the sun or whatever but you, you do also get like areas that that are pretty dark maybe underneath here as well maybe put another dark shadow underneath here why not here as well okay some little darker streaks of color in here Okay, you can even add in some more if you think that, uh, see over the top like this, just adding in some more branches and things. I don't like the, the, the moment really where I was thinking to myself like whether I wanted to put some more in on that left side and I can do that now. Um, now we're not going to really get too much of that yellowish color from the tree, the bottom of the, the, uh, the trees and the, see this sort of yellowy color, but I, what I can do is actually re add that in afterwards with some gouache. Okay. And why am I doing this? Well, I, I, I think there, for some reason, there's something, I think there's just a void of detail in this section and I want to, <laughs> I don't know. I just want to put it in there, but, uh, you may not want to yourself it's just a personal thing okay like that some more of these branches here the way you paint branches is you sort of just you, you draw the main uh, branch and then you notice a lot of them just sort of go off on these tangents like uh, these Y tangents like that. And I skip over the paper as well. So instead of drawing a, a whole line, notice how I break the line up. I break that line up um, and that makes it look like this light or something catching on it. So like, for example, like this, look. See, I've just broken that line and it, and it makes it look consistent with the rest of the scene as well. Okay, so that we don't have all the same old rigid lines running through the entire thing. We've got like some variation in lines and brush strokes and colors and values. Variation. Uh, variety. Key to life, as they say. Um, and this opposition of light and dark, light and dark, you know, that's what brings together this scene um guys oh this here's this one thing of the, the the trees the plants so look i'm gonna simplify this down you can s probably do a bit more but i'm gonna look just what, what are these they're like kind of little i don't know what they are we can put in like uh, we've got a small brush use a little brush like this little little round brush I think this is actually going to be good because, you know, there's shadows lacking below, little details lacking below. Uh, what, what are these? Just like this, yeah? <laughs> so paint the leaves in with a few little, you know, a few little bits here and there. I don't even know what exactly what I'm doing. I'm just scumbling the brush. Scumbling is just, you know how to describe the technique, you just kind of dabbing the brush in areas and in randomized patterns, but with a little, a little bit of form as well. There's, there's a bit of, there's a bit of sense in this chaos. You're kind of just you're making it look more randomized, but in the process of making it look more randomized, it looks more like a, like a tree or something or a shrub. Okay. So there we have it. A bit of something there. 
These should be actually more green. I don't know if that's green. That's kind of like another color. I don't know. But they're dark anyway. And the, the yeah, as long as you've got a bit of darkness in there, you're fine. Bit of brown. And here I can just potentially put in like a stem or something for some of these. See how they're just sort of going into the, the pot. More water. Uh, yeah, like that. And you can put in flowers as well. You don't have to have these same kind of, I mean, these look a bit boring actually. I probably had, I, I'll do it again. I probably would have put in some, um, some lighter colored flowers or something like that in there. Okay. But yeah, you know, it kind of looks like there's something in there. Um, a bit of darkness. And I want to, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking whether I want to redo some of these shadows or not, because there, there is actually some darker bits and pieces in here, like in here, for example, underneath the, the pot, some parts of the pot. Um, you know, underneath the pot especially, you do get some like really dark spots and then the, the, these little edges there as well. Um, these little nooks. Got a chance to just add in a bit more color. A little bit more darkness, I mean. How's that cat looking? It doesn't really look too much like a cat. Sort of can make out what's happening there, but it's not so uh, obvious. A bit more color up the top, a bit more darkness with the shadow. This, this door, I think I need to just darken this door yet again with more blue. Uh, something like this. You can't really tell what's happening there, but yeah, something. Okay, I'll just put a little, few little dabs of color here on the edges of this, the stairs. Oops. Underneath the cat, the shadow of the cat there. Okay. It's taken a lot longer than I had actually thought and, um, you know, that happens sometimes because I'm kind of working this out at the same time, but it just goes to show, you know, um, like I said before, you just got to have a bit of a process and I, you know, I go through the lighter bits, paint the lighter bits, paint the darker bits after. You just continually add in details until you've got something that makes sense. I don't know, there's just feel like there's something else I could potentially add in here. You know, gouache is a great thing as well. You can use gouache to put in some details. I'm going to put in a bit of yellow for this, like this pot there. I've forgotten to get in some color. A bit of white gouache. And this gouache, um, it's basically opaque watercolor. A bit of opaque watercolor. Okay. And I'll use a bit of it along with along with some green. Why am I doing this? Well, I want to, a bit of yellow, yellow, white, gouache, and a bit of green. And I want to just drop in some of that, hopefully. Yeah, come on. A bit more yellow. I want to drop in some of that on the trees and you know, maybe a bit here, something like that. Just get in some little highlights. It's kind of tricky. It's, um, yeah, you don't want to overdo it as well. So in areas where you've got like a lot of darkness, you can do this sort of thing, see? Bring out some tiny little details. 
of those trees. Okay. Little leaves and things you can just like scumble your way through and just yeah, bring back some of the light in here. This is too obvious, this bit. I'm going to change that. Scratch that off. Here. And a bit here. Notice how all this detail kind of starts to add up after a while, doesn't it? Okay. You know, here in the plant, you know, a little bit of green. I thought, why not just add in a little bit of green in there? Uh, jazz it up a touch. It just looked a bit boring before, in my opinion. Okay. Um, just use a bit more of that white gouache. I'm going to mix in some yellow to it. If you don't have white gouache, you can also use some titanium white. That also works quite well. Uh, what else do we have in here? Yeah, I mean, there's not, not a whole lot of else that I think I want to do. These little pot plants already in the window. Ah, I didn't want that. Doesn't matter. You know, but for example, here, you know, like this this tree, um, a little bit of light on the right hand side of the tree, making it look like there's some light coming in. You know, that could be another kind of uh, quick indication of maybe another tree there. You don't have to do all this stuff. It's just a little thing I wanted to to just experiment with. Okay, it's so all slowly, I think, started to kind of come together. Okay, now I'll probably work on this a bit more afterwards. But I think, really for today, we've got a good, a good sort of indication of this scene. We've practiced so many different techniques, and... Um, I've learned a lot. Okay, even myself, I've, I've learned to, I've learned a lot by just painting this scene. Um, let me know how you are doing, and hang around if you're still here. Hang around because I have a special announcement to make in terms of a program that I'm running. So make sure you stick around. I'm going to take off this this paper, and oh, it's electrical tape, but seems not to have damaged the paper. Okay, um, like for what it is, and I do need to darken a few things, like these steps, they should be a little bit darker, but for what it is, um, I'm fairly pleased with it. Like the thing I like the most is the, um, thing I like the most is the, uh, the trees, actually. Um, and I, I think also would be good if I darken I reckon I should darken this wall a little bit to the side as well, just to create a, um, yeah, a bit of a, a bit more of a border there. Okay, so let's have a look. How does this, how does this look? Let me know. Let me know how you found the class today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's been great. It's been fantastic having you all here. Jesus has been a challenging um, session. It's been a challenging session. For sure, uh, one of the most challenging references I've had to do live, um, but I, I think I've pulled it off all right. Uh, but I want to hear what you guys think, and if you have any questions as well. Um, but yeah, stick around for a bit. I, I want to just go through a quick presentation. It's not going to take long, probably about five to ten minutes, just on a special program, special course program that I have running. And... Um, yeah, it's, it's a program, like I said, I've been running probably for around two years now. And this is it here. It's the Watercolor Essentials program, and you'll be able to find the link to it in the video description. So if you're interested in joining, click that link and check it out. These are some of the scenes that are included in my 70 course program. Lots and lots of different projects in there. Some... Some of them are similar style to how we've uh, to what we've done today with line and wash. Some of them are more 
pure watercolors. This one's line and wash here too to the, to the right hand side. You can't see my head's in the way. But uh, you know, one of the things I found when I was learning watercolors is I was spending so much time sorting through hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of of uh, these incomplete tutorials online that be sped up. Often the instructors wouldn't explain what they're doing along the way and just assume that you have some knowledge, even to, in terms of what we talked about today with perspective and drawing stairs. The drawings are not really uh, talked about in watercolors. It's just assumed knowledge. And I found that I was just spinning my tires. I wasn't learning much. I spent a year trying to learn watercolors and I, it was so frustrating, as you know, when you spend a year trying to learn something and you look at the paintings from the start when you started and then at the end and you don't really see much of a difference it's very demoralizing so um i decided to create my own program to basically run through my entire process it's the process same process that i use today i go to go through it in a lot more detail because i create individual courses that um, have uh sort of introductory and techniques based components to it as well go into more details so when i'm talking about using wet to wet techniques when i'm talking about perspective drawing people values light adding light and dark mixing colors i talk about that in a lot more detail so that it takes away that confusion master that way you can also you know dramatically improve your paintings that's you know this is a some some examples you know when i started painting look at that i was drawing stick people and then you've got here um got here obviously something more recent this was actually a year and a half a year and a half ago so yeah i've improved a lot since then and it's by applying a certain process uh, which has really helped so um one of the big things that you'll find by enrolling in this program is that you'll feel a lot more confident and relaxed when you paint because you know what you're doing you know what comes next you know why you're you're you're, you're you know potentially going in the light colors using light colors first you know how to plan your painting how to choose a reference photo and i have all the reference photos are provided as well i spend hours and hours actually searching for reference photos that are perfect for watercolor it's difficult to find a good reference some people say that it's any reference can be a great painting can turn to a great painting and i, I believe that as well but for beginners it's so crucial to have the right reference photo because if you choose you know quote unquote the wrong reference photo that doesn't have enough shadows that doesn't have um enough details and position it you, you struggle even more because to turn it into something um interesting requires a little bit more thought when you're a beginner you, you know a lot of the time you're just focusing on those preliminary techniques and processes so you, last thing you want to do is be trying to figure out what you should paint trying to find a, a perfect photo of something it's very frustrating but um yeah you'll be a lot more confident relaxed when you paint a funeral um, and also you'll be really proud to show your friends and family some of the beautiful paintings that you create and that's something i really struggled with in the beginning as well i was kind of embarrassed at the paintings i mean i mean look at that one not too bad for maybe a first couple of goes but wasn't something that i was showing people and especially six months later when i was still kind of painting like this it was uh you know, you know it was a bit frustrating so Another big thing is we don't find ways to connect to our creative sides these days. And you know, we end up a lot of the time, some of you may be retired or some of you may, uh, may be still at a job, but finding time each week to connect to that creative side of yourself is so crucial, both for your mental health, give you something to do, something to work on and feel like you're improving, um, improving in an area. And, you know, some people love to, to, and like myself, I really like to link my creative um, endeavors to parts of my life. So if I go out and take photographs, I'm on holiday and I take a photo of something, I want to go home and be able to recreate that and paint that thing that I've seen and store that memory. And I think, you know, creating your, your own unique interpretation of a scene is so, um, it's just so rewarding and being able to do that from scratch. So here's a few things that you'll get with the course as well, the program be able to paint with confidence like i was mentioning before you know the process from beginning to end struggling and you're making use of every single minute that you're painting um, understanding perspective and drawing is a big thing as well it's not really talked about much in watercolors 
you know, it's just assumed knowledge that you know how to draw, but it's so crucial because like I said before, if you haven't got that top of the staircase in accurately, the rest of the painting is, the rest of the drawing and painting is going to look out of whack. Timing, so knowing when to do things with wet and wet, knowing when to get in those sharper details, waiting to the end, for example. Um, brush techniques and water control, you know, what brushes to use, how to dry the brush off so that you've got a more broken line for some of those trees, how to control your water so that you've got enough water for a, you know, a sky mix or basically enough or less water in your mix to create a lighter or darker value. It's so important. I've got a whole, a whole course in that program that talks all about that, 15 videos. Values or tone, magic component, like I said just before, values, they're so crucial. With the shadows in the scene that we painted today, if we didn't get in those shadows, it would look flat, it wouldn't look like much at all. So I have a whole a whole, um, a whole, course in there based on that. Layering as well. So layering is something I talk about a lot, learning how to, to simplify your painting into just a few layers. Okay, and I paint pretty quickly in a pretty loose sort of manner, okay, but it still represents the reference photo. You can still tell that it is the reference photo, and you end up with a nice painting after like an hour or two, which is super rewarding. The last thing I want to do sometimes, and, and some of you are very patient, you can go back and stop a painting, come back to it the next day. The last thing I want to do, with it, you know, is come back to it and, and keep trying to fix it up and, you know, add more and more. It's painting all in one go, and a lot of professional artists um, watercolor artists do this because watercolors, I think, is meant to be finished in one go. That's meant to be loose. It's meant to be fresh, spontaneous, rather than kind of like a labored process. Okay, um, that's more kind of for oils, if you ask me. Choosing colors is so important as well. You know, what colors do you need? Did you notice today how many colors I used? I used like five colors. You don't really need many colors in there. And a lot of artists, a lot of artists think that they need 20, 30 different colors. And you get sold by all these companies that want to sell you, you know, 30 color set, you know, buy this and you'll be able to paint anything. But it just confuses you. And you can actually paint most things with only three to four colors. You can mix them up yourself. And in the process, by learning how to mix colors, you learn how to get in different values and you learn how to simplify and you make life easier for yourself. So you're not thinking about what you're, which color you're mixing all the time. Simplification is so important because there's so many variables in watercolors that it can get overwhelming. Finally, I talk about vision and vision is one of the most important things. It's when you start your painting, you think to yourself, what do you want to portray? Do I want to just copy the reference photo? Do I want to change it up? Is there something in this scene I really like? Maybe it's the light, maybe it's the cat. Maybe you really like the cat in here and you want to detail the cat. You want to zoom in on that photograph a bit more. You know, thinking about what unique qualities and what unique vision and interpretation you want to put on your reference photo, what you want to convey to the viewer. And that's so important because I think for me anyway, making sure that vision and, and that interpretation kind of goes across to the viewer, you know, at least the basic aspects, like if you want this to look like a nice little Mediterranean scene, getting that across to the viewer is so important otherwise if if a person is looking at your painting and they're wondering what's what's going on here i don't understand <laughs> you know you've kind of lost them so uh yeah that self-expression and getting that across to people is super important so anyway in this program this is what's included 70 course program like i mentioned before you get unlimited instant access as soon as you sign up today you get access to everything hundreds of hours of paint along demonstrations there's so much stuff in there and one of my students pamela uh, Pamela, who's in the chats today, you know, I think Pamela's done most of these already. You've done, uh, you know, you've done like ninety-eight percent of the course, which is fantastic, and you've improved so much. Adds free live recorded workshops as well. So all the workshops that I've done today and in the previous months are all on there, so you can watch them. You can learn at your own pace. Super important because when you are, um, you know, when you are learning watercolors. You know, one of the big things is uh, you're often a bit slower, you know, mixing up the colors. Things are easier for me because I've been doing this for so many years already. I've been uh, mixing colors. I've been experimenting. I've got all these paintings that I've painted and I absolutely hate them. But but um, being able to pause a video, go back to it, start again, you know, makes it very crucial. 
step by step as well, narrated in real time, just like today, except I do go into it in more detail because I don't have to multitask. Here are a few references, a few uh, scenes that I painted that are part of this workshop, uh, part of this program, so workshop. So lots and lots in this 70 course program. This is only some of the projects available. There's so many in there and there's something in there for everyone. Um, and I think it's great value because a lot of courses you see online, they'll charge an arm and leg for even just um, you know six paintings like that, six different projects. So it's a great opportunity to pick everything up for one price. And here is uh, some of my other uh, scenes that I've done. I've got lots in here that I've put in. Okay, and um, yeah, they're all all themed, different themes in there as well. There's even portraiture, okay, portraiture courses in there. And, you know, I teach on different platforms, and these are some of the reviews that I get on different platforms, I get consistently high ratings from my students. I have my own platform, which is what I'm talking about today. So when you enroll my own platform, it just allows me to give you that personalized feedback. And I get students that send me messages on Facebook that are part of... Um, our private community that are also, you know, also sending me through photographs of their paintings. And that allows me to sort of give you some tailored feedback. But um, yeah, having it on my own platform just makes it easier so I can uh, get to you better. So there's a few bonuses. If you enroll today from the first two months of your registration, so say if you enroll today, you're going to receive tailored feedback on your artwork. So kind of what I was talking about before, you can contact me on email through messaging, give you some feedback on your work and this is going to save you a lot of time because when you're painting you often don't know what you're doing right what you're doing wrong and i'm going to be able to identify that and say okay yep you know this the drawing you need probably to put more effort into the drawing and into perspective and try these exercises you know one of my students was recently talking about drawing people and um you know for example i, I gave her an exercise where she would paint like a hundred different people using one color, one brush, simplifying those figures down. And after that, she felt a lot more confident being able to paint it. So just these little things like that, that rather than spinning your tires, it allows you to, to think like an experienced watercolorist and um, take a bit of a shortcut there. Another bonus is that you get access to our private watercolor mentor academy group. Okay, this allows you to get um, assistance, post questions, get priority support. There's a, there's two more communities that I run. There's the Watercolor Mentor Group, which I'm probably going to make private soon as well. It's got 3,700 3, uh, people in there. There's another one that's got 215,000 people in there as well, which is more like a general watercolor group. But this one, this one you get access to, which gives you priority support if you ask questions in there. And the third bonus, like I said before, is that you get access to all my previous uh, recorded workshops, all these little projects that I've done in the past, including today's one. Okay, so this is how much it costs. So you get 70 full courses in there. Like I mentioned, you get hundreds of different projects. Um, you get the two month student support from when you enroll private group access. Normally I charge $497 for it, but today if you enroll, you get, you get it for $297, which is great value considering that you get 70 courses in there. And each course in there has uh, lots and lots and lots of videos. Like some of them have even 30 videos in them, um, which can be up to 10 hours. So yeah, it's a lot, a lot in there, um, but there's something in there for everyone. So yeah, if you're interested, type enroll in the chats. And um, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, type enroll in the chats. There's also a link in the, uh, there's a pin link in the chat. There's a pin, there's a link in the description. You can click on and enroll. You, um, I do have Patreon as well. You can check out my Patreon. It has the, the same courses in there if you want to jump on and enroll month by month that's available but this is probably the best value you can get because you have like i said unlimited access to all 70 courses in there in this program and um you get a few of those bonuses as well so yeah let me know in the chats if you are interested and um yeah that's the link as well you can also just type that into your browser but it is you know it is pinned there if you're watching now if you're watching afterwards as well have a look. And here are some nice little student testimonials as well from some of my my students. Okay, um, Lisa and Philip. I haven't seen Philip for a little bit. Um, there's a question here. Um, in, in YouTube, 
uh, I've got a question about how long we have access to the materials. So basically, I put unlimited access in there basically as long as you need, as long as you need. Now, I can't, you know, some of these, you know, I've got my own platform. So um, I upload the videos on there. So it's kind of independent from YouTube if it's in, it's independent from um, everything else. So if, if it goes down, I mean, who knows, even YouTube can go down at some stage. I have backups of everything and I'll just... Uh, upload it to a new platform but i've been running it for three years now it's a very reputable platform that's been running for i think over 10 plus years so yeah pretty much get unlimited access uh okay what else do we have here we've got some yeah more student testimonials here it's really basic and I, what i'll do as well i'll just flip back and then i'll go to the i'll show you kind of what it looks like when you get inside the program i think that's going to be important for you guys just to have a quick look if you are interested let me just flip back here. Here we go. So this is what it looks like when you when you enroll in the program. Um, this is it essentially. So you jump in, and you've got all these all these courses in the program down the left. Okay, and I've separated them out by watercolor. This loose watercolor painting essentials. There's 31, 31 lectures in there, and uh, you know there's there's a few more. You know that one's like twenty. 20 different um, videos in their watercolor. So some of them are just one, uh, but most of, them, most of them have multiple projects, but some of them, probably like five to 10 of them have just one project, like a sunflower field and watercolor, where I go into a bit more detail. Okay, especially with some of the, the, the complicated scenes, it's uh, better to just separate them out. Line and wash, got tons of line and wash. This one's one of my most popular popular courses that are that's included in this program house and building portraits you know um what is victorian house details and shadows so you basically just click on the video video loads up here my internet's running a bit slow because i'm streaming at the same time but it will run let me run a bit a bit faster for you guys um video loads up here on the right hand side play it go through um it's taking its time at the moment because i am streaming okay that's one. What did I have? I had like a really nice, uh, maybe it was this one, this New England house scene there as well. So very simple to access, uh, very simple to go through each scene. You know, pen and wash here as well, beach landscapes. Yeah, that's another. Another one here. Okay. House and building portraits. One of my most uh, one of my most popular popular courses. Um, there's also a portraiture here, so you can go right down to the bottom um, and do some portraiture classes with me as well. All the bonus live workshops, seventy four bonus live workshops. Can't get better than that. So um, that is basically about it. Um, Sorry, I'm kind of a bit nasally again today. I'm just I'm still uh, recovering from a cold or getting over a cold anyway. So any other questions, let me know in the comments while I'm here so I can answer your questions. Okay. Just going to bring up the chats again. And if you are interested, just type enroll or check out the link. Check out the link in the, in the video description. Uh, who else do we have? We've got about... We've still got about 20 people watching today. Um, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. So thank you all for coming along. And um, and uh, Gail, just sort of reading through some of the comments, Gail was saying, uh, love yours, mine is more timid. Uh, put it, we'll put it away and try to pump it up more. Yep, come back to it later and add in some shadows if you need to. Thank you, JT. Thank you, Loretta, for, for coming along today. Thank you, Aaron. Um, you new face I haven't seen you before uh, but that's about it so I think I will end the stream probably in a few moments unless there's a, any final comments is lay um, new face as well I haven't seen you before thank you for coming along and for your participation and your engagement today um, as well It'd be very helpful especially when the stream was a bit funny earlier on um, and I hope to see you all next time so that's about it i'm gonna end the stream now thank you